how to get amazing results with SDXL. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? We had an amazing live stream yesterday. You guys are legends. We talked about the best settings, how to upscale the images, quality, reviewing images online. So today I will compress all of that information into a tutorial. So shout out to all of you, but also special shout out to Winston Wolf. He's part of my Discord community. He helped me yesterday in the live stream. He helped me today. So let's get started here. First, we are going again to look at ComfyUI because this is an amazing lab to experiment with the different methods and see how everything works, but also set up automatic testing of different methods. So here is what is new. Let's scroll in here on the side and you can see that we have multiple instances of prompts. So here we have positive R and negative R. And when you look at the wording, you can see that this only defines the setup about the quality, about the style of the image. So here we have detailed photo, wide angle shot, realistic, 8K UHD, high quality. And then in the negative prompt, it's also 3D render, anime, smooth, plastic, blurry, grainy, low resolution, deep fried, oversaturated. Not sure what the deep fried is there, but we all love the chicken wings. So that's okay with me. And then we have here the model loaders for the refined model, for the base model. We will go where this is linking in a second. But below that, you can see we have here another prompt. Now here you can see it says in this case, beautiful young French man with a beard and curly hair standing in a forest. And then in the negative prompt, we have 3D render anime. Then below that, this is the next important thing here. We have the total steps and then we have the steps on base model because there's a difference between them. So for the base model, in this case, we are using 20 steps and then we link that to start from the 20th step upwards to the refiner, which is using 25 steps. So there seems to be a golden ratio of 80-20 so that you have a 20% of refiner steps and then 80% of the base model steps. Below that, we have just the image size. So we have seen that before, 1024 by 1024 batch size one. Down here, we have the CFG scale and we have the seat in here, which in this case is fixed. But of course, you can also switch that to, for example, randomized over here. Fixed is good for testing, of course, the same results with the same seat with small iterations in your settings. And then below here, we have another positive prompt for L and the negative prompt for L. Now this is the same prompt as above, but it can also be a different prompt than above. And this again focuses on the technical parts of the image. So is it a photo, wide angle, realistic, 8K and so on and so on. So now we come to the next step and this is the base rendering where it's not refined yet. And don't get confused by all of these different cables here between the nodes. It might seem intimidating, but it's really not. And also I have this as a download for you so you don't even need to set up anything of that. But of course, you can experiment with that. You can expand on that, build anything you want from that. So here we have the two clip text encoders specifically for the SDXL model. And this upper one is for the positive prompt. And this here is for the negative prompt. Now, in this case, you can see here we are coming in with the clip. This is from the base SDXL model. Then we have here two text inputs. One is text G, the other one is text L. Now, when you follow these lines, you will see that the text G is coming here from our input prompt that defines what is in the scene, the content of the scene. And then the L input comes from down here where we have positive L, negative L that defines the technicality of the style and so on about the image. So here we have the input for both of the positive prompts. And here, of course, we have the input for both of the negative prompts. Both of them are set up with a width of 4096 by 4096. But don't worry, the image is still going to be 1024 when it comes out. Next, we have here the K sampler advanced. Here we have the input for the model. This is, of course, the base model for SDXL, the positive prompt for here and the negative prompt from here. Then we have the latent image. In this case, it's an empty latent image that is coming from what I showed you before, 1024 by 1024 batch one. 
Below that, we have the input for the steps, the end at step, the noise seed, which is basically just a seed, and the CFG scale from the nodes that I have shown you before. And as we have seen, this is going from zero steps to 20 steps as the base stage. The next step here with the VAE decode is not necessary for this step. This is just so you have a preview of what the base render looks like. In this case, this is our result of the base render, which is not refined yet. That is why there is still so much noise in there, because this is not rendered to the finish. So now at the next step, we are going to look at the build up here for the refiner stage. Now again, we have here a clip text encoder for the SDXL refiner. In this case, you can see it is a lot simpler because now you have here a clip input and a text input and that's it. So the clip input in this case, of course, comes from our refiner SDXL model and the text up here comes from up here for the positive R prompt for refine, negative R prompt for refine. So those go in here, but not the content description of the scene, just these kind of technicalities here. So those go into here, get mixed with the clip model and then get output here and here into our K sampler for the positive and negative prompt. Again, we have here an input for the model. This, of course, is now the refiner model. Now we have a latent image. That is, of course, the latent image that is coming out of the base render. So when we are following the line, you can see this is the output of the base render going up here as the latent image and then over here and into our input. Now here you can see we have here the total step count and then we also have start at step. Now this is the node I showed you before that defines the step for the base model. So we can also use this as the input for this case sampler because we want to start at the 20th step and then from then on render the other five steps after that. We have here also a seed input, but this does not have a CFG scale input. So here you have to set the CFG on your own in this case. And also the other settings in here like the sampler, the scheduler and so on. Now in this case, we actually do need a VAE decode. And in this case, when we follow the line of the VAE decoder, it goes over here, over there, and then into our refiner model to render the output of our image as a pixel image. So to understand this better, a latent image is just made of the data points that the AI is using to define the image, but it's not a pixel image yet. And then what the VAE decode is doing, it is taking all of these data points and actually rendering it into pixels that you can look at on your screen. So at this point in the process, we do have a beautiful picture, but it is 1024 by 1024. And when we scroll into it, it is very nice, but it's a little bit blurry and it could use more details. So yesterday in my live stream, you showed me a process that is using a double upscale. Now the first upscaler here is a specific skin detailer. This is a 1x upscaler. So it doesn't upscale at all. It only refines the image. After this is done, the image is then going into a second upscaling down here. Now I have split this up into two different methods. One method is using the 4x NMKD CX upscale scaler. And the second method you find over here is using the 4x ultra sharp upscaler. Now here at the output for both of them, you can see the results side by side. And when we zoom into the image, this is the upscale with the NMKD model. It looks very nice, but it has a little bit of a graininess in there, although hairs and other details come out very nice and sharp. And over here we have the upscale from the ultra sharp model. This also looks pretty nice, but it's a little bit softer and it sometimes has the downside of being blurry in separate parts of the image. So for example, here you can see that this part of the image is rather blurry, while here we have rather sharp lines on the face, although the skin looks very dry and a little bit wrinkly. I will link you all of these upscaling models below my video so you can download them, you can experiment with them. And when you download them, of course, you want to put them into your ComfyUI 
CSI folder there into the models folder there into the upscale models folder and then you simply want to reload this image you don't have to restart ConfUI just reload the browser image and then you can select it here from this list I will also link for you a model database for upscaling models that are trained by the community for all kinds of purposes so you can download them you can experiment with them this will often link to a mega drive link you will see here a view of a folder and there you have a pth file that is the upscaler file that you need to download so for that go to the right side for these three dots you click on that you have download select standard download for that it will take a little bit for preparation of that and then it will ask you to save it to any kind of folder where you want to save that now here's another advice from my community you want to go to the official stable diffusion discord in there is a show and tell xl room for the XL beta so here you can find very very nice examples to look at also in here you have a Parthenon of the winners of their challenges so this not only shows you the best images from these challenges but also the prompts that they have been using so you can experiment with these prompts and they are also relating to the SDXL beta so there's a lot of inspiration and amazing results in these two discord channels I will also link the official discord for stable diffusion below this video so you can join it right away finally I'm also giving you my image for download and you only need to drag that image into the canvas of ComfUI and this will then automatically load the complete build for you of course for everything to work you still need to download the SDXL models and the different upscalers that I'm using in here all of that is linked below my video I hope all of that is helping you getting amazing results thanks for watching leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon bye oh you're still here so uh this is the end screen there's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool and yeah i hope i see you soon uh leave a like if you haven't yet and well um yeah <laughs>